What's up everyone, today we have a great discussion for you guys. We're going to be talking about what to expect from Pokemon on the Nintendo NX and how Pokemon Go and the advanced hardware found within the NX could revolutionize the series. Here with me to discuss this is the King of Hype himself, HMK, and an expert on Pokemon, Birdkeeper Toby, who will be starting us off with his thoughts. But I would love for you to be a part of the conversation as well. If you have anything to add, want to join as a guest on a future discussion, or just want to share your thoughts with us, please subscribe and comment below. And with that out of the way, let's get started. So one of the big things that's obviously exploded in the Pokemon community recently is Pokemon Go. And this kind of feeds into what we've been talking about, really. Uh, and how you know mobile gaming has just suddenly evolved into something new because augmented reality. Everyone thought virtual reality was going to be the big thing. And it seems to be the case that augmented reality is, uh, is, is taking a big front stage. Um, and... So, so with Pokemon Go, that what with Pokemon, obviously we're now at a point where we have like over 700 creatures. That we over 800 creatures by the time Sun and Moon come out. You know the and there's been a lot of talk about how the franchise can't keep on going forever, or certainly can't keep on going with the same, you know, new installment repetitive. And actually, there's a lot of in-game lore and theories and stuff that suggest that this could be tying up all the loose ends and this could be the end of the franchise and one of the big discussions is well what would a pokemon reboot look like and given that we've just had pokemon go a lot of people are saying well this is the reboot you know the next pokemon game is going to be pokemon go 2 which has all the johto pokemon uh pokemon go 3 has all the hoenn pokemon and so on and so forth and that maybe these handheld games stop which might make sense in relation to the nx however it could be the sense that if we've got gaming on the go through the nx is there a chance we'll see Pokemon Go on the NX and maybe it'll be a game a platform that supports augmented reality playing games out on the go uh, which again though means that the NX portable part has got to be pretty small because again who's want to going to want to carry a massive gamepad size thing uh, around out and about with them um, so I mean that's just really what I wanted to get your opinions on and hear your thoughts on um, because Pokemon is definitely at a point now where it could do with some shaking up for sure and uh, with the new technologies available to us through augmented reality on the phone and the NX that is coming out, it could be that the next Pokemon games, Generation 8, is something entirely different to what we expect. Uh, well, you know, I definitely see the big boom in what you're saying about, you know, Pokemon Sun and Moon and Pokemon Go and how Pokemon cannot, you know, go on forever. Uh, and I totally understand that, And but I feel that Pokemon Sun and Moon is um, not only, I, I would say it's like, you know, the end of the old guard in terms of Pokemon, but at the same time, it's also the, you know, the start of the new guard in terms of Pokemon. Because one thing I've always, like, one thing I've always loved about Pokemon is, like, the the adventure from the top-down perspective and how, like, the little chibi people. But at the same time, I was also longing for more ever since playing uh, Pokemon XD and Pokemon Coliseum because I love those games. And, you know, when compared to the main series of games, they were always, like, you know, in the shadow of... Uh, the main generations of games, you know, they weren't really true Pokemon games. They were just, you know, side of titles. Uh, you couldn't catch every Pokemon. There's only, you know, a set amount of Pokemon uh, available to you. But now with Sun and Moon, we have that. We finally have that, you know, full perspective of a Pokemon adventure in the palm of your hand. You know, uh, because X and Y was definitely playing around with a notion like that. But our characters were kind of chibi. The 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 landscapes were still kind of weird and out. They were not really fully fleshed out. Uh, like uh, they were in um, XD in Coliseum, but Sun and Moon seems to be taking that route now, and this could be the the first game in that new change for Pokemon. We don't need more Pokemon because we have like over 800 now. You know, we don't need more Pokemon. What we need more is bigger scale adventures with these Pokemon. You know, it's time to take that next evolutionary step. You know, it's just you know it's been building up to this uh, uh, up to this point. But now we finally have that that next big thing. That's what's going to show us in the next Pokemon adventure. You know, we maybe they'll finally decide to fully flesh out Kanto. Maybe something along the lines of the anime. I don't know, but you know that seems a little too um, overreaching. But you know something along those lines. And you know, and at the same time, you know, Pokemon Go could be something that you know is you know I wouldn't say hinting, but I would say you know t showing Nintendo what how people would you know I would say. How they were grasped at an adventure like that because of course as you said augmented reality pokemon go we're out there are us ourselves we have to go to certain areas to find pokemon and sometimes we have to go to far out areas and sometimes there's pokemon not even uh, available to us in our immediate area or how far we can go away from our homes and stuff 
and people are really going out of their way to catch certain Pokemon in this game. And, you know, this could show Nintendo, it's like, hey, you know, people want these type of grand scale of Pokemon adventures. We've tested it out with Pokemon Go. Perhaps we can translate this in the next game we decide to make after Sun and Moon. Because Sun and Moon, even though it looks like it's taking that same perspective as Coliseum and XD is, um, I don't feel like it's going to be as fleshed out as grand as I would imagine it to be. And if the NX is any type of indicator, if, it's, if the NX is as powerful as we hope to be in terms of, you know, console power, maybe the next Pokemon game could be on the NX where we have this, we finally have that grand scale Pokemon adventure on consoles that we always wanted. And, you know, Sun and Moon and Go were the stepping stones to that. Yeah, going off of what HMK said, that we have seen that gradual evolution from the 2D top-down games to now it looks almost identical to how Colosseum looked on the GameCube. And if it continues to evolve with more powerful hardware as it has, then I think the next Pokemon could be what everyone's been wanting for basically the past 10 years or even longer is that uh, sort of taking an MMO approach to where your your own trainer in your own story maybe you have an open world maybe there's a set path you can go out catch all your pokemon like you can in pokemon go to where you visit all these different places and even in the main game still you can go and there's different pokemon in different areas but if they take that to the next level and allow you to connect online since you're always going to have this with you and not just for battles uh like maybe running around the world and finding other people trying to beat a gym or working together to do stuff. If they take that approach with this next level mm. of graphics that the NX can offer, then I think that would be the best possible way because they would, if it's the next Pokemon game after Sun and Moon, then they would get all the people that are already buying the mobile Pokemon games like uh, yeah. X and Y and Sun and Moon. They'll be there for this next step, but it'll also bring in the people that may have set down Pokemon five years ago or ten years ago and haven't really looked into it. Maybe if they go and th take this approach, it'll bring them back and uh, especially with the success that Pokemon Go has been, I'm sure Nintendo, which really wasn't even involved that much with Pokemon Go and all the other companies involved with Pokemon Go are sitting down thinking about how can they live up to the success of this with their next installment or with nintendo they're probably thinking how can we make a side game or something that carries some of the success that pokemon go has reached mm. so do you think i mean do you with this whole gaming on the go thing do you think that's something that's definitely not going to be touching the nx in terms of like augmented reality i think um we've seen it a little with the AR cards that the 3DS had, and if oh, yeah. the NX had cameras at all, which I'm sure it does, probably on the front and the back, just as, say, the PlayStation Vita does, or any smartphone these days, I'm sure they'll use that in some way. What Maybe um, they could somehow bring elements of Pokemon Go to where it is that augmented Pokemon hunting with... Uh, a traditional Pokemon game to where if uh, maybe you're out walking around or something maybe it'll vibrate or you'll get a notification and you can just pull it out and you'll catch a Pokemon like you would in Pokemon Go but it'll carry over to the actual Pokemon game that's how I would see that mm. working but I'm not totally sure because this is just beyond speculation for me uh, but oh, what are wow. your thoughts on this HMK um I feel that it, it, they, they could play around with something like the, uh, some notion of that, like that, but I mean, at the same time, it just boils back to the question that we were asking all the way back uh, in the beginning of the chat, like how big is the NX going to be if it's going to incorporate that type of augmented reality that Go is doing on a smartphone? You know, smartphones and tablets in the palm of your hand, and tablets, you know, uh, I haven't, I, I mean, I've seen a shitload of people playing Pokemon Go. And I haven't, you know, not a lot of people use a tablet in order to play. From what I've seen, you know, I could be wrong, but I don't know if it's going to incorporate augmented reality that much into uh, the NX because augmented reality was only like really played around with in terms of the Nintendo consoles, like you said, with the 3DS and the AR cards and, you know, um, those little out of the box games that you get when you first boot up the 3DS. Uh, yeah, augmented reality seems to be, you know, like the big thing that a lot of people are playing around with. But I don't think, I really don't think that it should, it, I mean, it's not, it, it, it has no place in consoles, that's what I'm trying to say. Because, you know, yeah. consoles are still really trying to push VR 
and you know smartphones tablets there they have the augmented reality market uh consoles they're trying to capture the virtual reality market so i mean mm. i really don't believe that the nx if it is what it is that we see it i don't i still don't believe that augmented reality is going to be such a thing with it you know but at the same time pokemon go has shown that it's you know it, ha- it augmented reality has found great success um in in the form of smartphones will it translate in the form of consoles i'm not entirely sure but that does sound like a gamble nintendo would take so i don't think it would but no nintendo they probably are going to incorporate something like that into, into the nx if this is the nx yeah, and to go back on what you were saying about rebooting the franchise, I think if they do, it will be, uh, again, going back to what HMK was talking about with them evolving the graphics, I think they could do not necessarily a remake, maybe a reimagining of Red and Blue for the NX to where it starting over with the original 150, or maybe even adding the next 100 uh, from the second mm. generation in there but giving you this brand new style to where maybe it's uh, still slightly top down like it is in Sun and Moon or maybe it's a behind the back traditional third person Pokemon game. They, they should totally do a traditional one and you know they can they have Monolith Soft behind them. Monolith Soft, Soft is owned by Nintendo now. The second part of the people who make Xenoblade Chronicles and Xenoblade Chronicles t- uh, X. If you guys have played the game, they all the Nintendo needs to do is need to do not even Nintendo, all Pokemon company needs to do is you know make that phone call and get them on board, and we can finally see that grand scale Pokemon game, you know, with the help of Monolith Soft. I, they can do it. They've done great things with their games, and they're also helping with Breath of the Wild. So I mean, they they can do some crazy stuff when it comes to a uh, you know a grand overworld with monsters mm. and creatures teaming in that and i feel well, that xenoblade is like one of the biggest indicators that they are able to do that yeah the, one uh, of the discussions would, oh sorry uh, Go for it. i was gonna say uh one thing that i would love to see is instead of walking in the grass and a pikachu or ratata coming out and catching it if you could see the actual mm-hmm. pokemon and right. this is uh something uh, with Final Fantasy and other RPG games to where it was you walking around and then a random encounter. But now when you play Final Fantasy, you just see the monsters walking around the world as you do in Xenoblade. So if they did this with the Pokemon series, I think that would be great. Especially uh, uh, sort of like with Pokemon Go to where there's no Pokemon but you can see grass uh, coming up in the air and then once you get close the Pokemon will appear before you actually encounter it. If they did even something like that to where it wasn't fully fledged Pokemon walking around the world, uh, I think that would be a great way, like that next step in the Pokemon series. And if they do bring uh, the first 150 or 151 Pokemon, instead of just having those Pokemon and none of the others from the other generations, I think it would be smart to go ahead and include pre-evolutions or evolutions of those Pokemon. So uh, where Pikachu hatches from an egg and Pokemon Red, but then later on we find out that Pichu hatches from the egg and then that evolves mm-hmm. into Pikachu. If they go ahead and rewrite that and make those uh, other Pokemon part of the original or the next original first generation, I think that would be the best way to tie it together. Well, I think something they showed uh, recently with with the re-releases of Red, Blue and Yellow on the Birch console was a lot of confusion from longer, younger players in exactly that area where they go, why isn't there a Pichu? Like, I've got Pichu and Raichu, where's Pichu? And people explaining, oh no, that doesn't exist in Generation 1. Um, and I think one of the biggest parts of the discussion about the Pokemon reboot that's that's been going on within the Pokemon community is, well, what if it was like Breath of the Wild? What if it's that art stuff? You know, what if, I mean, literally, just instead of Link using his sword to kill people, let's put some Pokemon in his pocket, let's make all of those wild, you know, creatures and villains, let's make them Pokemon, he can see them. And, uh, you know, as you're saying, like a reimagining of the original games, you know, maybe it's not a case of building up that world into 3D, like they've been doing so far between, like, uh, Ruby and Sapphire and Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, but maybe it's more of a case of, okay, let's reimagine Kanto. How, how might it look? It'll probably be a little, you know, it's in some ways the same, but in other ways different. Um, you know, uh, and certain areas that have certain Pokemon, but there's lots of them. Almost like Skyrim in a way, where you go into a dungeon, but that dungeon in particular is filled with a very certain kind of Pokemon uh, that that lives there, uh, that you have to deal with and and take in the right kind of Pokemon that has the same, has the right kind of uh, special 
uh, super effective moves and that kind of, that kind of thing to deal with it. Um, and it would make HMs very different, you know, all that kind of stuff. So I, I definitely like if they went into the even near the realms of Zelda Breath of the Wild uh, with Pokemon. I think that like that would just be the coolest thing, and that's definitely people something people have been talking about in a, a much larger, more more immersive world, a larger world with Pokemon in it. You know, I, I think you just pitched my perfect Pokemon game there. Right, mm. <laughs> that's something a lot of people have been talking about, and a lot of people want. Uh, the only question is then, how do you make that experience? Like, how do you have the same experience of? Because a big part of Pokemon is. Hey, you've got red version, I've got blue version, we meet up in public, we hang out at each other's house, we do our trading, we do our battling. Now, maybe that works with the NX because of the portability, you know. Like, would you take... I, I guess the question is, if your friend had Pokemon NX and you had Pokemon NX, would you take your console over to their house? Or, because they have it, you just play it on that, like, how does... Is there that trading kind of level? Because the big thing about Pokemon is, oh, you have a copy, I have a copy, let's trade, let's battle. That's a big part of the, the you know, the way it works. Um, so the, the only question in that kind of 3D space where you've got this large, expansive, immersive world is how do you incorporate that in a way that isn't just sitting at home with the headset on talking to your friends over the online services? Right. So, you know, that that that's the mystery and, uh, you know, Nintendo's always been one to experiment with things like that. And um, Pokemon Go is definitely, you know, a fruit, a, a nice fruit of that experimentation. So I feel they'll, fi they'll figure out a way uh, to incorporate that, you know, type of social, you know, because po the Pokemon was born out of, you know, getting gamers to be social. And they are the ones that pioneered the social, um, the social gaming market way back when in 1996. So I feel that, you know, they will they they would figure out a way in order to get that right balance of social gaming when it comes the only way pokemon knows how to do it but how will they do it eh, we'll have to we'll have to wait and see uh okay well hey i'm burkey for toby i have a i have a primarily pokemon channel i do pokemon theories uh top tens that kind of jazz but i'm looking to move into zelda come next year which is why i thought it'd be a cool idea to reach out to some of you uh other zelda tubers and just start talking about more zelda -y things with you. Um, and yeah, mostly I do theory stuff. I'm really into the lore of video games. Hey guys, I'm HMK. I like to talk passionately about video games. I love to yell, I love to rant, I love to get people hyped. And I delve a lot into uh, The Legend of Zelda and Kingdom Hearts and like Bird Keeper Toby and uh, Jesse. I am also a theorist. I love, to, I love to do theories on The Legend of Zelda and Kingdom Hearts. So if you uh, like that, you should, you know, Give my channel a try but i also delve into uh all things nintendo uh a broad scope but you know my most my main focus is my my two my two biggest loves is definitely zelda and kingdom hearts